is video 12 on the tutorial series on Scilab and Xcos. So in the last video, we went over the theory of second order systems and we saw that how the spring mass damper system can be mathematically modeled. And this is the equation that I've written up top. And so we've derived this equation, not derived exactly, we've arrived at this equation in the last video and I've written this down just for reference. So in this video, we'll just see how we can actually get around to modeling this equation so so the first thing that I want you to focus on is just the blocks that I am highlighting in blue right so this can be represented by a summation block right so let's do that first so from mathematical operations we introduce a summation block since this has three ports and one is positive and two are negative we'll have one minus one and minus one Right, we'll just expand this for our benefit. Right, so the first thing will be the force that is applied on the body. So we'll just we'll just assume that the force is a unit step function. Right, so this will be plus F. This needs to be minus C into X dash or Oh yeah, x dash means uh, the first derivative of x with respect to time and x double dash means the double derivative. So x dash is essentially velocity and x double dash is the acceleration, right? So the output of this block right here, right? That will be nothing but the mass into acceleration, okay? Right, so it will nothing be but m x double dash, right? So where will this go? So this will essentially come, wait, let me see. Yes, from continuous time systems, we put an integral block here. Uh, but before that, we have to do something important. Right, so this is m into x double dash. Right, so what we need to do is get rid of this m. So from mathematical operations, just import a gain block, right? Now what a gain block does is it takes an input value and just scales it by another value, right? So we'll just say that we need to get it by 1 by m. But there'll be an error because we haven't actually defined this m variable. So as we've shown you earlier, from simulation go to set context and define the system parameters. So let's say m is 1 kgs, right? We have to define the other terms, the damping coefficient. Let's say it's 0.2 and the units will be newton second per meter right and let's say the spring constant let's also keep it at one and the units will be newton meter newton per meter right okay so this then would nothing would be nothing but x double dashed right now once we integrate x double dashed it becomes x dashed so what we'll do is we'll just copy this integration block one more time right so the output here will be x dashed and the output here will be nothing but x right just stay with me for a moment uh, it will all start to come together in a minute so let's have a c scope for our final displacement and let's have a clock from sources right we connect them we connect them right so this will plot the displacement so let's just name it displacement right now we need to take care of these blocks right so x dashed has to be multiplied by c so what we do is we go to mathematical operations we select the gain block and we put two of these over here right so you press control or command on a mac select both and then click control r r r so that rotates your boxes right so this will have a value of c because that is the one that's multiplied with x dash right and you feed this back into this loop because it's f minus c into x dashed right so it's c into x dashed and it's minus right 
similarly this shall be k and we remember we've already defined these variables in the set context so it should have no problem recalling these right and this goes to the third port uh, my bad right so we select everything right now let's say we also want to model the okay let's do a thing let's get rid of this line right and we, what we'll do is we'll plot both we'll plot the force as well as the displacement so from signal routing let's select a mux right one output of the mux will be the displacement of the system and the other input of the mux will be the force that we are applying to the body right so this mux will be connected to the c scope we'll just order everything once and we'll okay let's set the step function okay let's set it let's keep it at its initial values only the final value will be one it will be applied at one seconds in time right seems pretty all right right so let's simulate the system once and then we'll go over the entire results again but before we do that uh, we have to remember that we have to set the simulation times first otherwise it will keep running for a hundred thousand seconds right so let's just run it for 30 seconds because that's the default refresh period of the scope let's see how the graph looks like right so as you can see this is the force that we've applied right and this is actually the displacement of the body so this is why it's called a second order it's called a second order system because uh, so for this this is an under damped system uh, if you if you are into control systems engineering you will understand that there's a lot uh, happening in this domain there's critical damping there's over damping this is under damped there are undamped systems as well so uh, let's not discuss too much on these uh, but we'll just revise the model once more right so first uh, this will be the force that we are inputting so this will be the force f right so f undergoes some sort of summation which is essentially the net force acting on the body right so the net force acting on the body divided by the mass of the body will give you the acceleration right so uh, yeah i actually goofed up this here will be 1 by m I mean, uh, let's run it once more to make it more accurate yeah yeah actually it made no difference because the mass also was 1 kg so yeah so right but yeah this is more uh, theoretically accurate obviously right so so once we got x double dash we integrated it twice to actually get x and uh, in the intermediate steps we took out whatever derivative of x was required so we needed the first derivative and the actual value of x and we took them out passed them through gain blocks to have their appropriate multipliers and then fed them back so this is an ideal example of a feedback loop which can only be found in second order systems and above so this is the one thing that is not available in a first order system we'll get more into the details of second order systems and feedback loops later while modeling other other more complex systems, but uh, that'll be it for now. Thank you for watching.